The year is 2009, and unbeknownst to everyone playing WoW, the game was at the forefront of bringing esports to where it is today. The introduction of the arena game mode in TBC quickly saw a meta develop, with one single composition standing the test of time, even to this day. From the era of Orange Marmalade and his infamous 1v2 kill, to the legacy left behind by legends themselves duking it out in RMP mirrors, the comp has never failed to get a crowd going and provide some of the most entertaining games ever witnessed in the WoW PvP scene. Fast forward to the modern age of WoW, and a handful of players have made a name for themselves in the recent years, consistently staying at the top of the ladder with RMP, the most notable of which is Waz and his many teammates. In this video, be taking a look at the complexities behind the modern RMP and what makes it such a strong comp, regardless of the state of the meta around it. To kick things off, there's no better place to start than the opener. So let's uncover exactly why RMP openers are so strong and how many players like Waz are able to gain so much momentum from their openers. One of the most common misconceptions when it comes to RMP openers is that you have to follow the very set script of sapping one target and opening on the other. What many players who execute their openers in this fashion fail to realize is that as they climb the ladder and face higher rated players, their opponents will start to react and preemptively use things. Let's take this clip as an example. While a low rated RMP may rush to quickly sap the Paladin and then open on the Monk, an RMP on the level of Waz's team opts not to do that because doing so would actually be a huge mistake. Sapping the Holy Paladin here and attempting to open on the Monk will give the Monk enough time to either pre-port the setup or preemptively use some defensive CDs to completely waste the CC on his healer. So instead of sapping the healer, Waz actually opts to sap the Windwalker Monk, who is their kill target. And his team uses that time that the Monk is sapped to set up cross CC on the Paladin without giving the Monk an opportunity to react. We see Waz kidney the Paladin, and then Shadow Step cheap shot the mage with his subterfuge. This gives his team enough time to land a full Ring of Frost on the Holy Paladin, and Waz can then Shadow Dance and cheap shot the monk, effectively securing their opener on the monk without him being able to react and use a single ability. The result is that they force the Medallion and Blessing of Sacrifice from the Holy Paladin, all because they executed the opener properly and didn't allow the monk to play the game. Now, this doesn't mean you're always going to open this way. It's up to you as a team to broaden your knowledge of the game and identify which classes are capable of disrupting your openers if you don't sap your kill target. Take this clip as an example, where the RMP is facing a shatter. Based on the last clip, what do you think the RMP should do here? They've got a handful of options, including the obvious play of sapping the Paladin and opening on the Priest. Take a moment to think about what the best play is. Okay, if you said this time the RMP can just sap the Paladin and open on the Priest, you'd be right. Just kidding, that's definitely not the move. As in the previous example where the Windwalker Monk is capable of pre-porting the setup if they sap the healer, the Shadow Priest can pre-grade or fade the setup if they sap the Paladin first. So, we see the RMP sap the Shadow Priest, but this time instead of using the sap to get their cross CC on the Paladin and then open on the Priest, they actually opt to open on the Holy Paladin instead. And this is just one of the reasons that RMP is always going to be one of the best comps. Once you understand the game to this level, your approach to how you win different matchups becomes incredibly flexible, with multiple different paths being possible to work toward your win condition. Anyway, we see the RMP open on the Holy Paladin while the Priest is sapped, and this immediately forces a bop. Now, what's so great about this opener is that they've already forced this cooldown without actually having CC'd the Paladin yet. This basically means the game essentially plays itself at this point, as the RMP has a very clear and obvious path of setting up on the Priest while he's still in the sap and landing CC on the Holy Paladin at the same time. So we see Waz move over to the Priest and get him into a DR sap just to give his mage a little more time to land CC on the Paladin. However, because the enemy Paladin does a great job of avoiding the mage's CC, we see the RMP react and opt for a blind as their CC on the Paladin while getting the Priest into stuns. This does unfortunately leave a gap, which meant that the Priest could have used Greater Fade to immune the stun. But lucky for the RMP, he doesn't get the Greater Fade off, and just like that, they force the Dispersion from the Priest. Now, this is of course threes, and you'll notice in these two clips, the RMP didn't pay much attention to the Mage. Well, before we move on to the next clip, let's actually break down exactly why the enemy Mage wasn't able to peel the RMP and was essentially ignored the entire time. Fire Mages effectively have three strong tools to peel the RMP, Dragon's Breath, Polymorph, and Counterspell. 
The enemy mage's first play of the game was to Dragon's Breath Waz from stealth. This was entirely expected by the RMP, as they know both the Paladin and Priest are locked down, and the only possible instant CC that the mage can use to peel is going to be the DB. Now, because rogue globals are actually shorter than other classes, being only one second, a quick dispel on this Dragon's Breath will allow Waz to cheap shot the mage before he can frost Nova Waz. And that's exactly what we see here, with Waz being dispelled out of the DB and crossing the CC onto the mage. Then, during their setup on the Shadow Priest, the mage polymorphs Waz, which is then dispelled, and the follow-up polymorph is counterspelled, rendering the mage powerless to peel. This means the RMP effectively took the mage out of the game and stopped him from being able to peel, simply by knowing what he was going to do before he even did it. Anyway, what exactly was the main takeaway from this entire opener? Well, as a follow-up to the first one, RMPs need to be smart with the way that they use their sap. Don't just sap one guy and open on the other. Remember, players these days won't just sit around and let you do what you want. You have to approach every opener carefully and make sure that you execute cross CC properly in order to force real cooldowns on your openers. And if you big brain it like Waz did in this clip, you'll even start to see opportunities like the one in this clip where you can quickly swap around and force multiple CDs from different players in just the first few seconds of the game. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, well, what if I'm facing a comp where I can't easily set up cross CC without the enemy team disrupting me? And that would be a great question. A typical example of this is when facing other rogues or ferals, basically teams with players in stealth that can peel with more than just a DB or frost Nova from stealth. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how this RMP handles openers against a mirror, where both teams are capable of completely shutting down the enemy setup from the get-go. Usually when teams find themselves in a similar scenario, they find that opening second rewards them the most. That way the enemy rogue can open first, you can peel their opener and then do your own. However, if you're a top RMP, you can and will assert dominance by opening first. Waz does this by timing his kidney shot on the priest just as the mage drops a little low and having his mage go for a polymorph on the enemy priest. This immediately forces the enemy rogue to come out and kidney our RMP's priest while also forcing the enemy mage to trinket and counterspell the incoming polymorph. Now, it's worth noting that the correct play here was for the enemy rogue to stop the polymorph himself, which would have allowed their mage to hold onto his trinket. But that's exactly what makes top RMPs top RMPs. They know the right strategies, and by making aggressive plays like this, they can force mistakes from inexperienced teams and capitalize on them. Okay, so let's take a minute to analyze what's happening right now and why it means Waz's team is actually ahead. Both priests are in a kidney shot, while Waz is already in a stun. To the untrained eye, this would make it seem like the enemy RMP is ahead as they've done their go first and are about to get a ton of pressure on Waz. But in reality, the stun on him is completely wasted. RMPs should only ever put their target on stun DR if they're able to land CC on the enemy healer. And because our mage is free to control the game and is faster to react to what's happening, we see the enemy healer put into a ring of frost, while a DB is used to stop the enemy mage's ring of frost. This DV in particular is also an MVP play as it gives Waz enough time to get out his stun and turn the game around with a stun on the enemy rope, just as the Ring of Frost lands on the enemy healer. So just to recap, moments ago we saw Waz in a full stun while his healer was kidneyed. Yet, just a few seconds later, this has turned into the enemy healer sitting in a Ring of Frost while Waz has the enemy rogue in a full stun leaving our RMP completely in charge of this opener as they've managed to get their setup on the rogue without the enemy team accomplishing anything, all because they made sure to not waste their stun DRs, which ends up with them forcing the enemy rogue's trinket and sets them up to win the game later on. So without a doubt, the biggest takeaway here is that you never want to mindlessly use your stunts. If you're stunning the mage in the opener, it's because you're trying to capitalize on momentum and mistakes from the enemy team that can force CDs. And if you're stunning the rogue, it's because you're definitely landing CC on the healer and will force CDs. Now, before we move on to the next section, I just want to quickly point out that DB play from the clip one more time. Take a moment to recognize exactly what's happening here, as the rogue is in a DB while the enemy healer has been CC'd. We'll come back to this concept later, just remember it because it is extremely important. And also, real quick everyone, if you're interested in learning more about how to execute your openers as RMP, or as any class for that matter, we have hundreds of arena guides over at skillcap.com wow, with more being released every single week. There you can select your class and watch through our weekly releases of arena commentary straight from some of the world's best players as they walk you through their decision making in real time. 
so that you can learn exactly how to correctly execute your openers and create your win conditions in a variety of matchups. So head on over to skillcap.com slash wow if you're interested and sign up today, link in the description below. And speaking of win conditions, this next section is going to cover exactly that. When it comes to actually winning games, it's vital that your team sets up kills with a plan on how to win the game in the future. Remember, not every setup is going to result in a kill. Arena in World of Warcraft is essentially a game of tug and war, with each team chipping away at the opposing team's defensives until they create the window in which they can win the game. And while every comp generally aims to win games in this way, RMP does so more than others. Let's start by continuing on from that first example where we saw Waz's team start with a sap on the monk to get a clean opener and force the Holy Paladin's trinket and blessing of sacrifice. With their next setup, assuming the monk continues to be their primary kill target, the best that they can hope for is to force the monk's trinket and touch of karma, or the paladin's divine shield. But given that Blessing of Sacrifice has already been used, they're better off setting up on the Monk again to get his Trinket out of the way. And so we see a setup on the Monk with Combustion, which ends up forcing Trinket, Touch of Karma, Fortifying Brew, and even his Emblem, making him a very good kill target in the future. Now, with two setups successfully executed, Waz's team have yet to commit their blind, which means that their next setup will likely force a Divine Shield or Blessing of Protection on the Paladin for him to get out of CC. Again, this means that their next setup won't win the game for them. Looking back at what they've done so far, first they force the Paladin's Trinket, then they force the Monk's Trinket, and now with this third setup, they're going to force an immunity from the Paladin. But before we look at how this setup is executed, remember when I pointed out the MVP DB on Dalaran Arena in the RMP Mirror? Well, part of the reason why it's so good to Dragon's Breath the kill target as you land CC on the healer is that it prevents the kill target from preemptively using any cooldowns, which is just another variant of what we saw in the opener of this game, when Waz sapped the monk to set up on him while CCing the healer. So, as you can see here, Waz blinds the healer as a DB is used on the DPS, giving him enough time to reach the DPS and stun them both effectively creating a 3 versus 1 situation that forces both the Ice Block out of the Mage so that he can land an Interrupt and the Divine Shield into a Blessing of Protection from the Holy Paladin. At this point, Waz's team is now free to set up a kill on either the Monk or Paladin with Cross CC. They decide to set up once more on the Monk and could have in fact won the game if it wasn't for the preemptive Blessing of Sacrifice from the Holy Paladin. So we see a very common and smart play being made of swapping on the Blessing of Sacrifice to try and get more cooldowns from the Holy Paladin. This is a prime example of adapting to the circumstance and working toward your win condition faster. Given that the Paladin used Sack to keep the Monk alive just as his trinket was coming off cooldown, swapping to the Paladin here is the best decision a RMP can make to take another step towards finding their win condition, which in this situation will hopefully be the Paladin's trinket. Unfortunately, the Paladin preemptively uses Aura Mastery for additional damage reduction, and so is able to sit the full stun without trinketing. Anyway, with the Paladin now off of Polymorph DR, the RMP can quickly set up another kill, this time on the Monk. With this setup, they actually go through the Karma by committing Combustion and end up forcing the Paladin to Trinket. So they've now brought the game to a point where the Paladin has no more outs and the Monk has no Karma, effectively meaning they've reached their win condition, providing that they can kill through the Monk's Trinket. And so, with the Paladin off Poly DR again, we see one last setup made on the Monk, which results in them winning the game as no major defensive cooldowns remain for the Windwalker and Holy Paladin. Alright, so throughout this clip we saw Waz's team consistently set up their kills without fail. Each time the Monk was stunned, the Paladin was stuck in CC. And when the Paladin swap was made, the DPS were covered to prevent them from peeling. So, what does that mean for you? Well, without a doubt, it demonstrates the importance of doing these setups properly, by communicating with your team and making sure that you get full value out of each set of DRs. This of course means that even mistiming the go by a second can ruin an entire set of DRs. Take this clip as an example where Waz gets Slice and Dice up in anticipation of the next step, only for his mage to land the Polymorph early. And with Shadow Dance on cooldown for 6 more seconds, Waz has no way to quickly stun both targets on the enemy team and set up a clean go. The end result is that the warrior gets enough time to intervene his DK on the step kidney, which should have completely ruined this go. But luckily for Waz, the DK makes the huge mistake of peeking back into his line, allowing him to Shadow Step, Dance, and Cheap Shot to win the game. If there's a takeaway you can get from this clip, it should be quite clear that if you're the RMP, your setups have to be timed well, and polymorphs need to go out when the rogue is ready to stun. And if you're playing against RMP, do everything you can to avoid letting the rogue get cross CC with their stunts, including things like lining the rogue at key moments. 
All right, now that we understand the need to have a plan for how each setup brings you closer to your wing condition and why each setup needs to be executed properly, let's hone in on just how quickly you need to set up kills to ensure your RMP can perform at the highest level. This ultimately comes down to something we already alluded to earlier, which is playing around your DRs. Let's take a look at the start of that TSG clip that we just showed you. The RMP opens and forces cooldowns from the DK. To do so, they put both melees on stun DR and put the Shaman on both Polymorph and Fear DR. The build up to the RMP's second setup is then based entirely around the DRs on the enemy team. The moment the entire team comes off DR, we see a second setup, with a stun on the Shaman and a Polymorph on the Warrior at the same time. The DK is then stunned while the Shaman is put into a Ring of Frost, effectively setting up another 3 versus 1 situation and forcing the Warrior to trinket in order to peel for his team. So, by just making sure they keep up with the pace of the game and set up as frequently as possible, the RMP are able to force multiple CDs out of this TSG in under a minute. The last point I want to look at is exactly how to use your entire team's CC to properly set up these kills, including the need to play around interrupts and lockouts. Up until this point, you might be thinking that these setups just look so easy for Waz's team, and that whenever you try to set up, your mage just gets interrupted and can never get CC at the right time. Well, yeah, there's a reason why it looks so easy for them. They're fully aware of the interrupts available on the enemy team and make sure to always play around them, either by covering the interrupt or setting up when it's not available. This clip here perfectly demonstrates one of the ways that you can deal with interrupts to help get your setups done without the enemy being able to do anything to stop them. To set the stage, Waz's RMP wants to set up a kill on the rogue, but the mage's counterspell is ready. Waz makes the call to wait a few moments until he can interrupt the follow-up sheep on his healer, and then they use this lockout to set up the kill themselves. We see a DB sheep on the healer with a kidney on the rogue at the same time, and the enemy mage can't do anything to stop it because he's locked on arcane. And this is what I mean when I say it looks so effortless for Waz's RMP. Once more, to the untrained eye, it seems like they did this setup while the enemy team was AFK. But the fact is, they couldn't stop it. So, from perfecting your openers to understanding how to work towards your wing condition and consistently set up kills with cross CC, RMP is renowned for being one of the hardest comps to play at the highest level. It's no surprise then that we don't see RMP all over the top of the ladder, but what we do see are a select few teams that are capable of playing the comp at or close to its potential, being able to stay at the top of the ladder year after year. Alright everyone, that about does it for this guide on why RMP continues to dominate the European and NA PvP ladder to this day. If you enjoyed this breakdown of RMP and want to see similar videos for other comps, let us know in the comments below. For now though, be sure to like and subscribe to be notified the moment we release our Shadowlands PvP content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.